Hi, uh, our teaching lesson today is our, about uh, face and neck lifting, the most advanced technique of the deep plane uh, face lifting and neck lifting with the division and release of the ligaments of the face. As you know, I mean, uh, face lifting can be done poorly, can be done on average standard, or can be done on an excellent and most advanced technique which offers the best long-term and natural results for the patient. It's exactly the same if you are going to do, for example, refurbishment of your uh, flat. You can do it on, on a low standard, on an average standard, or on a very high standard. Uh, uh, therefore, the uh, practice of face lifting has been really very much become advanced during the last 10 years. Now, uh, almost 99.9% of the facial plastic surgeons, they claim they do SMAS. You know, there is mass application, there is mastectomy, and there is the deep brain. Also, the deep brain is two stages: deep brain alone, or deep brain with the division of the of the ligament. Now, I mean, the most, I mean, the 99, I mean, uh, practice of facelift is to do the just only the standard standard mass, which involves a, a small piece of mass in in this area in this area up to here only, and then uh, do small mastectomy from there, and then do some, some medications such as all the way through. This will improve the uh, mid and posterior far part of the cheek, and only the upper part of the neck, and will not give actually, uh, uh, will not address the, the anterior part of the face, will not address the nasal fold and the myonate, myonate line. So the, now the new advances in facelift is to address the anterior face. 99% of the facelift to practice now address, I mean, very limited mass and address only this area there and part of the neck. So actually the patient will get better following surgery, but it's not really the best results. And I just explain the same with, with any profession. Before I start talking about the deep brain facelift and the release of the ligament, I want to give very important hints about the facial nerve and how to avoid injury to the facial nerve. Because I mean, the main problem with facelift following surgery is the uh, weakness of the face or any facial nerve injury. As all other problems can be easily corrected. But the main issue when the patient gets weak face, which may last maybe up to nine months, sometimes up to one year to recover, and in very rare cases may not, may not recover. Therefore, uh, to uh, avoid this, we should have a good and full understanding of the facial nerve. As you know, the facial nerve emerges from below the ear, and it has a this branches, the frontal branch, the zygomatic branch, the buccal branch, and the mandibular branch. The most important issue that there are some forbidden area during the facelift surgery. A very important to remember that this is this is the, the, the frontal branch here, this branch runs uh, from below the ear up to the lower border of the zygomatic arch there, deep between the two lobes of the of the vertebral gland and under the brachiosteum there. And then suddenly, on the upper border of the zygomatic arch, it emerges from under brachiosteum to above the brachiosteum. So at this level here, at this level here, it emerges from to more superficial and become above the brachiosteum and just under the temporalis fascia. So now in this area, the temporal, temporal branch of the facial nerve runs under, under the temporalis fascia. So it's quite superficial, I mean under the skin and under the fascia straight away. 
that's I, I give us very strong indication. I'm going to talk the next slide. That's the first important number one now. Number two, the mandibular branch again emerges from the main front and then runs usually usually within the, uh, by the margin of the mandible there. Of course, there's always variation. Variation there. Can be uh, uh, one centimeter above, one centimeter below. But in this area, it runs again, just straight away under the mass. So the mandibular branch here runs under the mass straight away. The skin, the mass, and the mandibular branch under the mass. These are the two branches, the, I mean the frontal branch and mandibular when they, be, they get any injury, it gives an obvious weakness of the face. So therefore we have to be very careful with this, with these, with these two, two, two branches, the frontal branch and the mandibular branch. So when you do your skin undermining, first to start with the incision. Usually, usually my let me go back here slightly. My, my incision usually, I start incision this way, about four or five centimeter behind the hairline, doing back hooking there, and then down on the preocular, and the right angle to the tragus, behind the tragus, right angle again down, a few millimeters below the ear lobe, a few millimeters below the ear lobe, very important in order to avoid any traction on the ear lobe. If you make, make your incision very close to the ear lobe, you will get traction because when you pull the skin, the skin will, 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 will attract and pull down the ear lobe. Therefore, very important to, do, to leave a few millimeters below the ear lobe and then the incision run, run, run back in the post circular sulcus and then to the other way when the ear they meet the skull and then the incision extend back like this. Okay, that's our incision now. Now, when, uh, the next uh, step is usually to do the skin undermining. Our skin undermining usually covers this area, like this, like this, now, now. That's the, our skin undermining, all this area, as you see now. Skin undermining, okay. That's the skin undermining. All right, this is all this area, that it's going to undermine. But what about the smash undermining? So the, the smash undermining usually in this area here and in this area down there, I'll explain later, in this area here and this area there. So, so we, uh, we will not go under the smash only in these two areas there. This is two areas where we go under the mass. Therefore, as you see this blue area here, this blue area is there, above the arch of the zygoma, and up to the uh, orbital margin, and all the way back to our incision. This is called, this is the first number one, this is number one, forbidden area. What I mean by forbidden area, only in this area we stay exactly under the skin, exactly under the skin. You, when you evade the skin, you need to see the hair follicles. So we stay exactly under the skin. Never try to go deep, because if you go deep, you can very easily go to the temporalis fascia and very easily cause injury to the frontal branch of the facial nerve there. So therefore, therefore, in this new area there, above the, uh, above the uh, zygomatic arch, up to the orbital margin, up back to the, our incision, uh, behind the hairline, this is called forbidden, no deep, no deep undermining. So very superficial. Always, when you elevate your, your, your skin flap all, all the way through, you have to elevate a very thin, very thin flap. You have to preserve as much as possible of your subcutaneous tissue and and the mass. So this area, the blue area here, is forbidden area to go deep. I mean by forbidden area, you stay exactly under the skin. No deep undermining, otherwise you can very easily go to the, to the temporalis fascia and cause injury to the facial, frontal branch of the facial nerve here. The second very important forbidden area is this another blue area. Also here, there is no smash here. Here, in this area there, you stay under the skin again. It will be staying exactly under the skin because the, the, the facial nerve, the mandibular flash of the facial nerve runs just straight away under, under the, under the uh, smas there. 
So if you go slightly deep, you uh, have a very high chance to cause any injury or edema to the mandibular branch. So in this area, no smash. In this area, no smash. Your smash will be limited. Your smash will be limited to this area. And if you want to do the next smash to this area, so here, subcutaneous, subcutaneous, exactly, and 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 the smash and deep in in these areas only. So these are the two forbidden areas, one in the blue, where you should stay exactly under the skin and try always try to see the hair follicles and never go deep. Always keep as much as possible subcutaneous tissue. I'm going to tell you why. So now before we, we move to the uh, pre-masseter spaces, I mean, the smas in the cheek is not really a clear smas. The smas is more clear in the neck below the margin of the mandible. So the smas is more, more clear from there. The smas is more clear. But in, above, above the mandibular margin, there is no clear smas. Actually, it's, 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 it's an uh, aboneurosis, aboneurosis. And even now, there are some theories say there is actually no, no smas in this area. It's only subcutaneous tissue. So therefore, you have to be very careful. And in the cheek, when you do your, your, your flab here, you should remove, you should be, make a very, very thin, very thin skin flab in order to, to be more deep. Because if you, if you go slightly deep, then you'll not be able to get a good smas or an, a, 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 well, a, a well identified or well defined smas. All right? So, so we have to be very careful here and remember that the, the, uh, this is, there is no actual smash here, mainly an aboneurosis, and the actual smash is below the margin of the mandible. Therefore, we have to preserve as much as possible subcutaneous tissue in the cheek. So now once we have elevated the, the skin nicely and very thin and everything, um, okay, what now we are going to, uh, uh, what, what now, I mean, what are the main steps of the deep plane, deep plane facelift? In deep plane facelift, the main issue, or the main, the main goals of deep plane facelift is to divide the ligament in the, in, in the face. We have ligaments which arise from the bone, through the muscles, through the smash and then to the skin. It's like a tree. This is the bone, and you have the muscles, and you have the smash, and then you have the skin. So these ligaments start from the bone, through the muscle, through the smash, and like a tree to the, to the skin. So this has to be divided from under the smash, from there, not from under the skin, from under the smash, in order to be able to, to pull the smash or the subcutaneous tissue as much as, as possible. Now we have the zygomatic uh, ligament there, we have the upper ligament, middle ligament, inferior ligament, and the mandibular ligament there. This is all the bremasseter ligament, inferior bremasseter ligament, middle bremasseter ligament, superior bremasseter ligament, and the zygomatic, zygomatic ligament there. So what are those ligaments? The first of all, you have a line from the lateral canvas all the way down. This is, this is actually where the zygomatic, upper bremasseter, middle bremasseter, and inferior bremasseter ligament. And then slightly anteriorly there, where you have the marionette line, you meet the mandibular ligament. As we say, this is a forbidden area. This is a forbidden area. So therefore, the mandibular ligament are divided under the skin, not under the smash. So uh, these three, three ligaments there, three ligaments there, the zygomatic, upper bremasseter, middle bremasseter, and inferior bremasseter are divided under the smash. So uh, a line from the lower border of the tragus towards the corner of the mass indicate for you the, the uh, with the junction of this line there, Chromatical cancers indicate to the site of the lower ligament. A line from the upper border of the tragus to the base of the alar indicate the site of the of the middle ligament. A line from the upper tragus towards the upper border of the alar there indicates the, the, the upper ligament. And a line from the upper tragus to the to the body of the zygoma indicates the zygomatic arch. So therefore now. 
We have, we have now here almost three to four spaces. Space number one is the inferior space, which is very important in run the below the inferior ligament up to the margin of the mandible, inferior space. Space number two, the middle space, the middle space here, which runs between the middle and inferior ligament, and space number three, which runs between uh, uh, middle and superior ligament, and space number four, which is the zygomatic uh, uh, space. Sometimes the superior and zygomatic space are they come together, so there is no clear legally margin between the superior space and the uh, between the superior space and zygomatic uh, space. Now our aim is to enter all those spaces under the mass, under the mass, get to the ligament under the mass, divide all those ligaments, and then go slightly anteriorly, and then after that we do our application sutures. So, uh, what are the limit of our mass? We actually, I do the mass on two two main stories or two main two main uh, levels. The upper mass, the standard cheek mass, which usually extend, which uh, this is the where the mass is, and the lower mass. So, what are the what are the out border of the upper mass? The out border is a line from the lateral canvas, as you see. And this line, this, this is the angle of the mandible there. That's the angle of the mandible. We stay 1.5 centimeter above the angle of the mandible, 1.5 centimeter, and 1.5 centimeter back to the angle of the mandible. So in order to avoid, to avoid any injury to the mandibular branch here, so you, you never limit here, you stay one centimeter above to the angle, angle of the mandible, one centimeter, 1.5 centimeter above and 1.5 centimeter back. So that's there. And, and this is more on the, on the zygomatic body, we connect this line, this way our entry, our entry to the deepest mass. So we enter the deepest mass from this border all the way through and we, we first of all, we uh, go through the lower, 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 lower uh, uh, space here, space, lower space. Start with blunt, blunt dissection, then move your finger all the way through until you reach to the, near the uh, marionette line with your finger. And then you continue again, you undermine the middle space uh, to the front until you reach to the buccal fat here. And also then you undermine the superior and the zygomatic space until you get reached to the zygomatic measure muscle and the fat on the zygomatic measure. So, once, once, you get, you, once you get to this ligament, you need to divide this ligament quite high up on the roof of the mass because uh, the branches, the, the lower back of the branch and the upper back of the branch and the zygomatic branch, they run very close to this ligament. So in order to avoid any injury to this ligament, we have to consider two important factors. First of all, when you divide this, this ligament, you have to be very high up on the roof of the mass. And then secondly, we use, we use the facial nerve monitoring equipment or a tool called Medtronic. We use it all over the, the uh, procedure. In my next teaching session, you will, you will see all these things. This is the first session of only to give an overall picture of the technique. And then we will have uh, lesson number one about the marking. Uh, and to be hand on, uh, practical, number one on the marking, practical on the, on the uh, dangerous zone, practical on the skin undermining, I mean to be operative technique, and then practical on the spaces, operative technique, practical on the, on the division of the ligament, uh, operative technique, and also the application, and also to see this, I mean, facial nerve monitoring, and the equipment machine, which will monitor the facial nerve all over the procedure. The same principle like an ECG machine. You have electrode connected there, and this electrode connected to a monitor. If you get close to the facial nerve, you will get warning and be straight away. You will see it in our, our coming video on teaching on facial nerve. So it has to remember that the important thing now in this upper mass, we say, it's a lower border is 1.5 centimeter above the mandibular margin, 1.5 centimeter behind the mandibular margin. 
And then obvious to the level of the zygomatic body and the level of the just behind the lateral cancer there. And we enter these spaces and we go for about two centimeters or three centimeters beyond the ligament in order to be able to achieve adequate, adequate lift of the, of, the, of the cheek. This is the most advanced technique. This is a technique of the choice to address the nasolabial fold and the marionette line. This is a technique of choice. Without doing this technique, division of those ligament, you can never be able to address the anterior face. Okay. In addition to this, in my practice, we also do the lower, lower neck uh, deep plane. In order to correct uh, the submental area, if you have a obtuse submental area, if you have a tricky neck or, 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 or double chin. So uh, and when we do this, 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 this lower mass, usually you put your finger on, you look your finger on the margin of the mandible, and at the lower border of your finger there, this will be the upper border of your undermining of the lower mass. And then on, you run on the anterior border of the sternomastoid muscle for about eight centimeters, and then you have get a, a parallel line to the first line there, to the midline of the neck. And then we elevate the smas from there, open the smas from this area, and go under the smas all the way through, under the smas to the middle of the neck. Once we have that, we are now quite safe because I'm, I'm one finger below the margin of the mandible, one finger below, and also again about uh, seven to eight centimeter below the one finger below. So we are quite below down. With this technique, really, with, and, then, and then once we, 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 we undermine all this mass, we divide this, I divide this, this border completely, and then put this flap to the, to the mastoid process. All this flap is put to the mastoid process with some application such as there. That's really will give you an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, cervical mental angle. I mean, I mean, it will, it will get a very nice 90 degree angle, like like this angle here. Very nice 90 degree angle. It will it will solve out all your problem with the double chin and the turkey chin. Of course, some patient may need some limited liposuction to this area. So that's what we actually we do. I mean, I I've been practicing uh, I've been practicing face lift uh, since 1995. Uh, we have done uh, thousands of procedures. Uh, I was practicing the standard SMAS, but in the last, in the last, last uh, years, we start to practice the most advanced SMAS techniques with the release of the ligament. This is my book about rhinoplasty and facial plastic surgery was published in 2002, 21 years ago, and this is the chapter of face lifting, some patient before and after, that's, that's 21, 21 years ago, chapters on base, you see, uh, the face lifting, neck lifting, and before and after uh, photograph, from page, from page two, uh, 424 to page 440, you have free access, you have free access to my book, so you can really go and access my book and look at this patient and look I can read carefully about about this uh, this technique. Uh, so therefore now uh, this is my 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 first my first session on 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 the deep brain face lifting and we explain the incision, we explain the uh, dangerous zone, how to avoid the injury to the facial nerve. The upper deepest mass, the lower deepest mass, only some hints now. Is, is this an only an overall overall picture? And also, we talked briefly about the facial nerve monitoring. So now, my lesson two, three, four, five, six are coming on the way. And to be hands on operative technique, you will be on on the theater and to be teaching lesson on on the operating room, on the on the skin marking, on the skin undermining on the facial nerve distribution and, and the uh, dangerous zones, on the uh, upper mass in full details, ligament, ligament division, and lower mass and the application of the flap. I hope I've been useful today. And this is uh, Bashar Bizra from, uh, from uh, our centers in, in, in Dubai and London and from the 
London Academy of Facial and Plastic Surgery and Rhinoplasty and Facial and Rhinoplasty Bizra Academy. Thank you very much for watching me. I hope I have been useful, useful to you today. Thank you.